Finance Minister Matia Kasaija announced an allocation of 828 billion shillings for the agriculture sector and reforms for the financial services in his budget speech. The reforms are aimed at helping the economy attain faster growth. Experts, however, see that strategic policy interventions are needed to achieve this target. Unless you are saying that you, they distributed the money to each household. So the question is, even the 800, the question is, what are those commodities you want to see being produced? Now, let us be frank. I don't think we, can, we want to see a government that distributes every kind of seedling. I think we want to see the government that can distribute particular critical inputs uh, for productivity, TC, but also allow the, uh, the, bar, the private sector uh, to, uh, to participate. So the question I think is the, we should not focus much on the allocation percentage that is uh, about 4% or 3% of the total budget. The question is, what is it that you want to do in agriculture and what is required? If you can have that actual plan of what you want to do in agriculture, what takes then I think we can look for, you can ask the question, is the money available, is it not available? While government's efforts to increase funding to the agriculture sector have been welcomed, economists doubt the capacity of farmers to absorb the funds. For the last X number of years that has been focused on assisting, particularly if you look, there's a lot of play given in the budget about how many seedlings are being distributed and how much money is being, a staggering almost 300 billion shillings has been set aside to distributing and buying seedlings. Uh, that's huge, just a massive amount. Um, and they're being distributed to the lowest, like, according to the state of the nation address. The, the poorest farmers are the beneficiaries of that. And I question that approach, because what is their ability to invest? What is their ability to overcome disease and, and, and drought, and so on and so forth? Um, what is the delivery model for those seeds? Where do we produce them from? How do we distribute them? How do we ensure that survival rates are good? Um, I think those are questions that we've not yet answered. On the other hand, government has been praised for putting in place a raft of policies to improve governance, but faulted on the operationalization of laws. But I think an area that um, I was impressed with the budget on was the fact that there is the recognition of the need to improve, one, the private sector, but two, financing. And from my perspective, it's the question of how does that now trickle down to the regular Ugandan? I was happy to see that there was the recognition of the inclusion of the Financial Institutions Act, and then also the MFI Act, and the MFI and Money uh, Payments, Money Loan Act, pardon me. But the question for me now is how do we go beyond just acts? to making sure that people at the bottom of the pyramid actually benefit. Observers also argue that a little bit of protectionism may be fair to undertake in order to improve the balance of trade and promote locally produced goods. If you go to the supermarket, you have three boxes of orange juice. One made in Uganda, wonderful, that's how it should be. Second one produced in South Africa, a major agriculture producing company, uh, country. They produce, export massive surplus of food. Okay. Third box, Dubai. Anybody been to Dubai? <laughs> there is not a single orange tree in Dubai. How can they export orange juice to Uganda? So it's also, I think, in terms of Putting a policy in place, I'm not saying close the borders because, okay, maybe you think I'm Trump, so I don't want to, to get into that discussion. But maybe there are certain things that as a policy uh, we might want, as we are fragile, we might want to protect a little bit our own stuff. Experts are also concerned that the current infrastructure investments spent on huge projects now taking the biggest chunk of the budget has not had a lasting impact on the local businesses' ecosystem. So what I'd love to see is that, yes, there's a Chinese contractor in the middle doing the road, uh, but he subcontracted 20 or 30 other SMEs around my ecosystem in Kapchorwa so that there's a multiplier effect. Um, but we're not seeing that trickle down. So, and that's why I keep hammering away on the quality of the spend because you can spend 4.5 trillion one way, 
you can spend it another way where it has a massive multiplier effect and to me that's more sustainable you're building capacity in these small enterprises they're getting bigger and better and the know-how they're also spending money in their local communities so for me that's the challenge is connecting the dots on that second layer funding for the budget is expected to be generated from the domestic resources and external support. The Ghana Revenue Authority expected to collect 15 trillion Ghana shillings in tax revenue in the 2017-2018 budget, up from 13 trillion in the previous budget.